Hello everybody, this is Steve Politi from the Star Ledger. I'm joined with Tom Lucci for what's going to be the first of, of many uh, videos this year on the new Rutgers blog. And i got to tell you, Tom, you couldn't come dressed for this year. You're, you're wearing shorts and flip-flops. This is the first video on our blog and, you know... First of all, let me ask you, is my hair okay? I know you're obsessed with my hair <laughs> so, because know, I've been reading your blogs and it's... Uh, it could be... You need some more. You need some more just for men in there. Maybe what off happens the is uh, when you spend every day at camp. Unlike some people at the paper, <laughs> when you spend every day at camp, every practice you're yeah. here, you know this heat kind of wears on you. It gets to your hair and it wears down a little bit. It's a nice stadium. They've really done some good work here. I haven't seen it in a while. Uh, anyway, we're here to talk about Rutgers football, not to make fun of each other, believe it or not. And and obviously, camp is just wrapping up. Uh, what are some of your impressions on how they did? It seemed like the intensity level was there from the beginning. Well, uh, the intensity level, I think, is the first thing. The talent level is the second thing. They have a lot of talent on this team, a lot of good young talent. And the third thing would be the leadership. Uh, I, I think we've really seen throughout the course of this camp from the beginning up until right now, um, Mike Teal, Jeremy Zuta, you know, uh, Rankart, Eric Foster, all step forward. I think this team is not going to lack for leadership. So if they, if they reach a tough point during the season, uh, they're going to have guys to turn to. And I, I'm especially impressed by the way Teal has taken over this team and, and made it his, uh, you know, and taken command verbally as well as by his play. Tom, Rutgers has never entered a season where the expectations are this high. I mean, I've got to imagine that's going to be a new experience for the fans, new experience for the players. Have you, have you gotten the sense that there's any, you know, any distraction that comes with that or anything that, that, that you know, the idea that there's 16th in the country to begin the season? Well, the basic thing is people ask me for tickets. There are no tickets. I mean, the third game of the season is homecoming, and usually I've been able to get tickets for people from home. You can't get tickets anymore. So that's the first thing. But I, I don't think the, um, the expectations have, have been weighing on this team that much because they came off such a strong finish at the end of last year with the bowl game, and they played so well against West Virginia. Uh, they spent time in the top ten in, in the rankings. It's not new to them. They had an 11-win season. It's not, this is not the novelty that it was last year. So I think they're a little bit more accustomed to it. Well, as you can see, we've changed venues. We've moved over to uh, closer to the bubble, and uh, neither one of us is out of breath. And that's because we, as media members like Rutgers, we train for chaos. Absolutely, absolutely. So Prepare for anything. For, we are we are ready, and we're in shape. And I've told Greg since uh, day one, he probably has the best conditioned media in the Big East. You yeah. look. This is proof. You look tanned and ready to go. I am ready. Okay, good. This is the schedule. Obviously, we're we're in front of here, and and. You know, I think most people would agree that Buffalo is, is a W on this, obviously, for, for the Scarlet Knights. But there's some I interesting agree. games after that. What what point in this schedule do you think it gets interesting for the Scarlet Well, this is just the home schedule, first of so all. It doesn't include Louisville and the, and the games at Syracuse and at Connecticut. But uh, I don't think there's any question when you look at uh, uh, the eight, October 18th and October 27th, nine-day stretch, South Florida and West Virginia, both at Rutgers Stadium, both may be ranked. And uh, I think that's very going to be very difficult for Rutgers to get a sweep out of there. And I say that because last year both of those games were two-point games mm -hmm. that could have gone either way. And Rutgers wound up with a split of those two games. One at South Florida by two, lost at West Virginia by two. Uh, and, and even though both of these are home this year, I, I could see this being a, another split situation. That's the, that, to me, that's the key point in the season. I don't see I don't see them losing a game up until that point. Uh, what about you? Is there is there a game on there that they could like they could lose to Maryland? I don't see it happening. What, what do you think? No, I, I don't think. Uh, I, I mean, I think Maryland's going to be their toughest game to that point of the season. I don't think there's any question. But I, I still see them being unbeaten going into that stretch that we talked about, South Florida and West Virginia. Uh, I'd be very, very surprised if they weren't. I still think nine and three, ten and two is likely for this team. If you had to put a number on it right now, start of the season before seeing them play, what do you think? I think ten and two with the chance to be eleven and one. I say 10-2 because I think they'll get the split out of South Florida, West Virginia, and then by the end of the season, I, I would say at this point, you'd have to say Louisville on the road is a loss uh, because they have yet to win that caliber game on the road. They didn't. They almost did against West Virginia last year, and maybe they should have, you can argue that, but they didn't get it done. And you know, To beat Louisville there when the stakes may be for the Big East Championship, that'll be a tough one. Now 10-2 would put them in a bowl again, obviously, but would it, be a, would it be a better bowl this year, or would it still be another second-tier level bowl? Well, it depends. It could be. It depends on how they do in that split, and then West Virginia, South Florida, and Louisville off to play each other. And I think they're all home and away. You know, so uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Big East standings get jumbled. But it could be the Gator Bowl. You know, depending on what again what happens with Notre Dame and if they get the, the, the qualify for the number of wins. But uh, yeah, it could be the Gator Bowl, which is not a second tier bowl. It's, it's a it's a January bowl game and. That would be a major step up for Rutgers. New Year's, New Year's Day in Jacksonville. Jacksonville. We're getting ahead of ourselves, of course. For now, it's Buffalo on the Thursday night. And uh, that's it for now. See you next week.